is Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the universe, the king of everyone, and the lord of everything. He is the only one who deserves to be worshipped. He manages the affairs of all kingdoms. He commands and forbids, creates and provides, gives life and death, raises and lowers people, alternates night and day, and alternates victory and defeat amongst nations, so that one nation rises and another falls. Only Allah's commands and decree are carried out throughout the heavens and the earth, deep in the oceans and in the skies, and throughout the entire universe. His knowledge encompasses all matters, accounting for each and every being and enveloping them with His mercy and wisdom. He hears all voices in their different languages and with their varied requests and pleas. One voice does not distract Him from hearing another, nor do their innumerable pleas confuse him. The pleading of the needy beggars, knocking at his door, does not aggravate him, nor do their questions annoy him. He sees all things, the visible and invisible. He sees the black ant crawling across a solid black rock in a pitch dark night. No matters are hidden from him, nor are secrets withheld from him. He has knowledge of all that has occurred and all which has yet to occur. Everyone in the heavens and the earth beseech him for their needs. Every day he attends to his creation. He forgives sins, eases difficulties, and relieves distress. He mends the broken, enriches the poor, teaches the ignorant, guides the astray, directs the confused, and helps the desperate. He frees the captive, feeds the hungry, clothes the naked, and cures the sick. He accepts the repentance of the one who repents and rewards the one who does good. He aids the oppressed and humbles the tyrant. He conceals faults and calms fears. He does not sleep, nor sleep benefit him. The deeds of the night ascend to him before those of the day and the deeds of the day before those of the night. Light is his veil. If he were to lift his veil in this world, the splendor of his face would burn all of his creation. What he possesses is not diminished by what he gives, for his right hand always remains full. On the day of judgment, the whole earth will be enclosed in a single grip of his hand and all the heavens will be rolled up in his right hand. Then he will shake them and say, I am the king, I am the king. It is I who created the world out of nothingness and I who will return it to how it was. No sin is too great for him to forgive. No request too great for him to fulfill. We're all in his heavens and on his earth. From the beginning to the end of his creation, mankind and jinn alike were to be as pious as the most pious amongst them. This would not increase his sovereignty in the slightest. And if they all, from the beginning to the end of his creation, mankind and jinn alike were to be as sinful as the most sinful amongst them, this would not decrease his sovereignty in the slightest. If all those in his heavens and on his earth, human beings and jinn, living and dead, were to assemble in one place and ask him, and he gave each one of them what they asked for, this would not decrease what he has by even an atom's weight. He is the first before whom there is nothing, the last after whom there is nothing. He is the most high and there is nothing above him the most near, and there is nothing closer than him. He is the most blessed and exalted. He is the most worthy of being worshipped and remembered. He is the most deserving to be thanked and praised. He is the most compassionate of kings, the most generous of those who are asked, the most forgiving of those who have power, and the most just of those who take revenge.
With his knowledge comes wisdom, with his might, his forgiveness, and with his withholding, his wisdom. None obeys him except by his permission. None sins except by his knowledge. When he is obeyed, he is appreciative. When disobeyed, he overlooks and forgives. His anger is always just. Every punishment from him is just, and every blessing from him is a favor. He is the closest witness and the nearest protector.